When I first started out making games using Game Maker Studio One, coming from a graphics design background, I had no experience in coding and no deep knowledge of different engines and their capabilities and limitations. A common question that always lingered in my head was, can you make this in Game Maker? Can you make that in Game Maker? Browsing the forums, this sentiment was echoed by a lot of other newbies relentlessly asking questions about the possibilities of GameMaker. Now, after many years of testing the ins and outs of GameMaker Studio and now GameMaker Studio 2, and also seeing other, more talented developers pushing the engine's limits even further, I can confidently say the answer to that will always be yes. Yes, you can create pretty much everything in GameMaker, with some drawbacks of course. The more important question would be, should you do it in GameMaker? As for example, there are a lot of restrictions regarding the use of 3D, so making a 3D platformer is technically possible in GameMaker, but using a 3D focused engine like Godot could save you a lot of headaches doing it. A huge trend in game dev YouTube right now is people creating incredible reimaginations of classic titles like Super Mario or Zelda in the game engine of their choice, oftentimes adding a spin to it like transitioning it from 2D to 3D. I love these videos and this gave me the idea for a video series of my own. I wanted to recreate classic or well-known video games using GameMaker Studio 2 to once and for all prove to myself that you can, in fact, do pretty much everything in GameMaker. And with it, I want to test my own skill level in the process. A video game series that has been dear to my heart since the very beginning is Kirby. Kirby's Adventure on the NES is probably my favorite game of the system, which I played through dozens of times and still fire up once in a while on the original hardware or on my Switch if I'm being lazy. With the release of the phenomenal Forgotten Lands and the remaster of Return to Dreamland just around the corner, Kirby has been all the rage lately. So I ask again the question, could you make a Kirby game in GameMaker Studio 2? The first thing I did was define the scope of the project. I needed Kirby, of course, and decided on creating one enemy, one copy ability this enemy brings with it, normal floor tiles, destructible blocks and some sort of collectible. For Kirby, besides the standard running and jumping, I wanted him to be able to inhale blocks and enemies, spit them both out as projectiles or swallow them, resulting in either copying the ability of the enemy or just getting rid of any sucked in blocks. I also wanted him to be able to fly by inflating himself and spitting out a puff of air, cancelling flight. I wanted to create all of the art of the game in Adobe Illustrator and after playing around for a bit I found an art style that was looking good enough fit well for a Kirby themed game and was quite easy and fast for me to work with. After finding the general style using the Kirby sprite, I quickly created a simple floor tile and mapped out the first room for testing. To start the actual development off, I coded simple 2D platforming logic for the player character and added a little particle effect for landing. Having done so, you could run and jump around the simple test room, which felt great, but I wasn't done yet. The second prominent method of traversing Kirby levels traditionally is floating. If you followed my Game Boy game devlogs, you know I like using something called state machines, which kind of splits up the code into these building blocks so the game only needs to handle a certain part of the player script at a time, which is managed by a state variable. Because of that, I was able to easily implement other states for Kirby, like floating, without being afraid of breaking the things I already implemented. So now, when pressing the jump key again while in the air, Kirby now transitions into his floating state, enabling him to float higher by repeatedly pressing jump or slowly sinking back to the ground, 
When touching the ground or pressing the inhale slash attack key, I wanted him to breathe out this little puff of air, so I went back to making more art to help me visualize everything a lot better. I ended up creating a lot of sprite work for the running and jumping, the floating, and also already for inhaling, which is a huge part of Kirby gameplay after all. Oh, and I also reworked the floor tiles to have this kind of 3D effect, which looks a lot nicer. So I implemented all the graphics using a separate animation object, which follows the state variable of the player object to display the correct sprites. And after directly adding a bit of juice with stretching and squashing the sprites, goofing around the test room started being a lot more fun. Next, I needed something for Kirby to inhale. So I made these little star blocks that you'll find in pretty much every Kirby game, which can be destroyed or inhaled and used as projectiles. Creating the inhale state was easy enough. While inhaling, the player object checks for any inhalable objects in a certain area in front of Kirby and just moves them towards Kirby's mouth until they're gone. If there are objects being pulled, Kirby is locked in the inhaling state until all objects are absorbed. I also then added another state, Kirby being full, to the state machine and adding animations and some particles to it, it already looked pretty good. One behavior I really wanted to add was getting a bigger and deadlier projectile. The more stuff you inhaled, the bigger shots going through blocks and enemies. I decided on three different stages, so having inhaled just one thing, you get a small projectile, having inhaled two gives you a slightly larger one, and three or more objects give you the biggest shot. For this, I simply needed to add a counting variable to the object and shoot the type of projectile according to it. I added everything, including the sprites for it, into the game and it really started to feel like a functioning Kirby game. It seemed like all the basics were there and it was actually fun to just jump around and spit blocks everywhere. Kirby has a huge catalog of adversaries. I initially thought about adding Waddle Dees as they seem the most iconic and are actually the first enemy you'll ever encounter in the very first Kirby game. Kirby's Dreamland on the Game Boy. But they would grant no copy ability. And as I was making up excuses to use Wild Loose because Beam always was my favorite copy ability, I replayed the first level of Kirby's Adventure and realized that the very first enemy you encounter in this entry was the Wild Do. So there was my excuse, and off I went making sprites for it using Kirby's Sprite as a template. I created an object for them in GameMaker and implemented simple code for them, making them patrol back and forth and trigger a beam attack every once in a while. Getting the beam attack down was a bit tricky, but what I ended up with looked cool and functioned as I intended. I made Kirby enter a hurt state when getting hit by the beam or running into the enemy, and now it was time for Kirby to strike back. I added a simple collision check with each of the three projectiles into the Waddle Dee object and made it get destroyed once such a check turns out true. But another method of dishing out damage was just as crucial for the Kirby experience. Since the second game, Kirby's Adventure, almost all Kirby games featured stealing the abilities of enemies as an integral part of the gameplay loop. So in order to make a true Kirby game, this was a must for me. I added swallowing whatever is in Kirby's mouth when pressing the down key. If you have only sucked in blocks, you will just return to normal. But if you have a poor enemy residing in your mouth, a variable is changed accordingly, so you will copy the ability and transform into this power-up Kirby. I made a custom sprite to reflect this according to Kirby's star allies and changed the ability to inhale into using the actual copy ability, for which I reused and altered the code the Waddle Doo was rocking. And after adding another hurt state, this time for the Waddle Doo, the copy ability functionality was pretty much complete. Without sound effects, everything seemed a bit bland still. To get simple sound effects going without going overboard with sound engineering, I hopped on BFXR and exported some fitting bits and added them to GameMaker. 
And for the music, keeping it simple too, I just reused original Kirby songs. Psych! I of course went ahead and composed my own little Kirby-like tune, plucked my Yamaha into my PC and recorded and edited it all, and imported the final song into Game Maker as well. Phew! At this point, we pretty much had a functioning Kirby prototype going. So I think we can confidently say that with time and a lot of dedication, yes, you can very well create something like Kirby using GameMaker Studio 2. But we're not done yet. There are just a few finishing touches I wanted to implement before calling it done. First, I made some semi-solids, so platforms that can be walked and jumped through, but also landed on from the top by just switching the collision mask off when the player is underneath it. Then, I created collectible crystal stars as a sort of incentive to really explore the levels. Having these, I drew up some UI elements indicating Kirby's health and the stars you've collected. Having transition doors is also an important part of any Kirby game. So I made this quick door sprite and implemented some code that would change the room you're in when pressing up. And lastly, I implemented a camera script so it would neatly follow Kirby around. With that, it was finally time to create an actual demo level for Kirby to traverse. There are still some obvious features missing, like climbing ladders or Kirby slide attack, but with the state machine in place, adding these would be no difficult task. Which just shows that the initial setup of a project goes a long way, helping you later in the development timeline. With that, we're at the end of the video. I hope you liked this type of video, if you did, you can tell me in the comments below, but also any constructive criticism is welcome. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.